Hi, this is Doug from Watch My Bit. A few months ago, Danilo interviewed me about Watch My Bit, its future, and some of the cool things that it does for artists who want to make money with their videos with Bitcoin. Unfortunately, since that time, Watch My Bit has gone into hibernation. This is because the current scaling debate has led to extremely high miners' fees, and it didn't make sense to offer a website that people could charge nine cents for a video, yet the miners' fees would cost 12, 14, 20, 30 cents. So the total fee for a nine cent video could at times be over 30 cents. I know there are scaling options that we could implement, but it takes time. Another thing we noticed is often artists would upload a video to YouTube, then upload the same video to watch my bit and hope to charge nine, 12, and 28 cents. But why would a fan watch a video and pay for it when they could watch it for free? Now, it makes sense if the artist were to advertise and promote to their fans that, hey, you can watch this for free on YouTube, but please spend about 14 cents on Watch My Bit and we will earn some money and this will help us produce more videos. We just didn't see that happening, which leads to another issue. Artists and content creators rarely advertise that they had videos for sale on Watch My Bit. Even some fairly large name content creators with some really, really decent content they would put the videos up and then wait for people to watch it or discover it organically, which really didn't happen because we are such a new site in a relatively new field. And I know it sounds like I'm blaming other people, but this was a learning experience for us and a very valuable one too. We will be going forward now with these lessons learned as we go into hibernation, consider our business plan and come out hopefully in several months or maybe maybe even longer than that depending on several factors. So until we do this and experiment a little more with some payment channels or until such a time that the Lightning Network SegWit uh, comes out or until such a time that we find some investors who uh, agree with our vision and want to take a ride with us, we're going to put Watch My Bit into hibernation. It can come back very quickly as soon as any of those conditions are met. In the meantime, my creative team is so bright and smart and cool that we are going to be working on other incredibly neat and Bitcoin-related projects, of which I can't talk about. So have fun listening to Danilo's interview with me. You can still find our YouTube explainer videos on our YouTube channel. And I still think this model of content delivery and monetization will be the future, and I have faith you will see us again. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation, and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theseasofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. So Peaceful Anarchism is covered by the BIPCOT NoGov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information on that on BIPCOT.org. So today we have Doug Scribner coming in from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He is an entrepreneur, libertarian, a voluntarist, and co-founder of WatchMyBit.com, um, amateur musician from L.A. and amateur, oh sorry, serious musician from L.A. and amateur screenwriter. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about his history of coming to volunteerism and what podcasts, uh, books, and authors uh, influenced him, as well as how Watch My Bit came about, and a little bit about what he's doing with his uh, with his screenplay. So, um, Doug, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Sure, no problem. And you can hear me good, I assume. Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I heard first heard about you from Anarchast. Uh, Jeff Berwick interviewed you. I never heard about Watch My Bit before, so <laughs> really grateful for that. And, uh, yeah, it's a really fascinating thing. You guys are, like, um, competing with Netflix, right, and also teaching people about Bitcoin at the yeah. same time. So, uh, 
So yeah, so so please, uh, yeah, get into a little bit about your your history of uh, of how you came to volunteerism and what influenced you along the way. Sure. Well, here's who got me into volunteerism: Rush Limbaugh. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh my God. So here's the story. I'm driving home from work. I was in the Air Force as a young guy, and I never listened to AM radio ever in my life. Somebody tuned the AM radio station to KFI in Los Angeles. Rush Limbaugh was on. But that's not the important part. The important part is, after Rush Limbaugh, Tom Likas came on, and he had a libertarian as a guest. He had the Andre Maru, who ran for president in 1992 or something like that. That's how old I am. And uh, these ideas, like, an, oh, my God, this makes perfect sense. I get this. I know you're the haters out there going to say, libertarian party, boo. But listen, they were the, the gateway drug that got me to become a lifetime volunteerist, right? That's the first step that I learned and I first heard about it. And from there, I got active in the party and then uh, learned about better ways of achieving liberty beyond the political method. And that's what I think your listeners would all like. But there was a gateway drug for me was the LP. And then I realized that non-political activism and the Free State Project and uh, uh, Bitcoin are way better ways more immediate ways of uh, achieving liberty in our lifetime. I still tip my hat to the LP because I wouldn't be here without them. And my years of activism wouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, I think um, Ron Paul, you know, was a great uh, gateway drug for many, many people. I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you can safely say he turned more people into volunteers and anarchists than, uh, than Murray Rothbard, than... Uh, you know, then, right. then William uh, Walter Williams and Henry Hazlitt and all these, although they're you know they're wonderful people as well. But it's it's just an it's an interesting phenomenon. Yeah, I think an Ayn Rand wasn't even an anarchist either. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's it's amazing what gets people thinking in these ways. Um, and you can never tell. You can never um, you can never predict these kinds of things. Sometimes it just happens. <laughs> right. And there's the old joke that all all libertarians eventually become anarchists if they really think about it. Yeah, yeah. If you take these uh, the concepts to their logical conclusions, um, happened yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, any um, any podcasts or books uh, that yeah. that affected oh. you? Yeah. Well, you know, I read Atlas Shrugged and was so like inspired. I started writing down the quotes on my <laughs> computer. Like, oh my god, that's a brilliant quote. You know, <laughs> she's kind of a curmudgeon, and you know, in hindsight, you know, who would read this book? It's kind of dorky and you know, three hour speeches and everything. It's not. <laughs> Super exciting. Although I did hear someone say, I thought that was so exciting. The trains blew up, you know, and that's action and stuff. So <laughs> kudos to Ayn Rand for fictionalizing philosophies, uh, which I'm doing with the screenplay, sort of. But um, so after the, those days, in my early days, I, um, I created, you know, I actually made uh, South Park came out and we love that. And they're a very libertarian leaning popular show with young people they probably turned a lot of people into libertarians also right right through comedy with all their concepts and stuff right on the show mm. so i remember i actually we actually as activists created south park in the classroom where we would take an episode of south park chop out the philosophical bits and put them all together and then we would go into colleges and show the five minute bit of the philosophy that south park is espousing have a discussion about it eat pizza and then watch the full episode later so we did this for college kids. It was it was a Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton. It was it was a fun time, and that's that's a great way to reach young people with fun ideas, you know. Um, uh, that experience led me to create a South Park commercial. Uh, I'm an editor in the old days, and did a lot of uh, editing and hmm. wedding videography and uh, the Cubby campaign. So we need a South Park commercial. So okay. I animated it from scratch, you know, and then we recorded it, wow. and it went on to win this award. So that was really cool too. It won award is on all kinds of news stations, including Fox News, and because it's so unique. That was the same year that Jesse Ventura came out with his action figure candidate commercial. <laughs> they won an award too. We won the 60-second spot, best commercial for governor, all 50 states. He won 30-second spot for his candidates for governor, you know, in Minnesota. Hmm. So. I really like using pop culture to explain our concepts. And you can do this with, with these animations and with the screenplays and with books. Hey, that's tough to do, man. That's, that's you know, our books are this big and they're full <laughs> of philosophy and they just, you know, harangue people maybe. Right. But so putting our ideas 
into 90 second sound bites is tough for anarchists and libertarians because it takes two minutes just to clear our throats half the time before we deliver this soliloquy of why we're right all the time. So yeah, squishing things down and, and making it easy to understand the internet and YouTube and all those other animations that we've seen out there do some really good jobs. Yeah, there's um, yeah, there's quite a few um, anarchists and volunteers that I've interviewed uh, that have uh, used animation. Um, I mean, not only animation. There's so many other methods to spread, like you know, through rap songs, um, through poetry, through reading book, you know, through books, through um, podcasting, just through novels. You know, Novels, Dark and Rose, right? right novels. Right. There's so many different ways. Um, like, you know, talking about um, animation, you know, there's Freedom Tunes. Um, Seamus Coughlin, he, he does some awesome stuff with that. Then there's a guy uh, on YouTube called Bit but Bit Butter, Bit Butter, uh, and he does the George Ought to Help series. I don't oh, know if you've I, seen I've that. I've seen those. Oh, those are great. Excellent, excellent. Short? Oh, yeah. They're short. That's yeah. the key. Right. Attention spans. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Look how fast I'm talking. I, my attention span is like this big too, and I'm old, right? <laughs> exactly. And yeah, I've interviewed that guy, and uh, yeah, fascinating guy. I mean, he George does a lot of help. Does yeah. a lot of great, great work. Um, and and it's that kind of stuff that really uh, sometimes you know, like like you said, people have short attention spans. They you know, although we love to hear an hour an hour interview or an hour podcast, <laughs> maybe the regular person who might consider this stuff would not want to do that or would be scared by a philosophical or an economic economic text and or so bored bored is right. the word you're looking for <laughs> so here's the thing yeah, right. you know we're doing an hour interview here that's great i would not watch an hour interview <laughs> I, I i get bored and here's another thing you know we have it, you know there's controversy about personality theory mm -hmm. so i'm a rational that's my personality theory personality Myers-Briggs. That's 10% of the population. You might be irrational, but you might be an idealist too. That's another 10% of the population. So together, we're 20%. <laughs> the other 80% of the world, artisans and guardians, you know, they want to run around and do stuff and go dancing and, and, uh, or they want to like, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're voters and they're, 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 you know, people who love rules and order. So, you know, that's, that's what we have to persuade. We already got the artists, we already have the rationals on our side and a lot of the idealists too. So we need to learn to speak other languages other than philosophy and, and logic. You know, and that, that's, I, I, that's why I'm encouraged by all the material out there that people have done. Hmm. The shorter, the better, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, uh, one, one, one of my friends on Facebook was describing when you talk to a statist, um, it's like talking to a man and an elephant, right? And the elephant is the emotional, limbic, reptilian side of the brain, and the man is the rational, rational, logical side of the brain. And so you can talk to the man all you want and try to appeal to the rational, logical side. But if the, you know, so if the element, if the man, you want the man to go left and then the elephant decides to go right, <laughs> there's no, there's no point, you know, it's futile, right? So, yeah. so sometimes you really do have to figure out what makes them so emotionally uh, invested in the idea of the state, of statism, right? Why, why, why do they think that's the only solution for every problem that humanity faces? And, mm -hmm. and so... That's a difficult task. <laughs> and that's a long task sometimes. That right. takes years for people to change in depth and, and you know, ideas that have been stuck since grade school and Mrs. Johnson, you know, the <laughs> teachers union stuff, right? right? I mean, that's that. So we have to be patient. We can't call them names. That's no. so ridiculous. Oh, you yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. You know, which I see so many of our people, our brethren do, you know, you know, status not allowed. Like, well, before I was an anarchist, I was a statist. Right, right. You know? Do you, do you want me on your team? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's the answer <laughs> half the time. You know, it's like, Rich, come on. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Also, the other um, big influence, um, I found Free Talk Live. So Ian and Mark, with, I listened to them back when they were in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, the internet podcasts were coming up and they were doing that. And they were talking philosophy and they were having fun at the same time, you know. They didn't have guests. They were a rock and roll show for a while there, just a you know teenage call-in show. Hmm. But then Ian became a libertarian and sort of started infusing that. And it's like, perfect. And that's how I really 
and I, I learned with them, you know, you used to be this crazy gun toting gold bug for a while. Right. And my cold dead fingers kind of guy. And he evolved into a peaceful anarchist, you know, kind of <laughs> like you. Right. <laughs> and the cool thing is that's where I first learned about Bitcoin. Uh. And so as they were skeptical, rightfully so, they had questions and people would call it an answer. I learned with them. I am so thankful to them and, have do and I'm an amplifier and donate to their show whenever I can. Um, because they helped me become crazy rich, Bitcoin rich, you know? I just started buying Bitcoin starting in 2011. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say crazy rich, now the, now the Fed, but I paid a lot of taxes <laughs> last year because I bought half the cabin up in Brainerd, Minnesota, so, you know, and uh -huh. I paid a lot of taxes when I switched my Bitcoin to do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Gosh, yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, so what, what is the Bitcoin they say is like it's considered... Um, like what is it? What does the IRS say? It's it's not considered money, and then but they, but then it, they consider what a property or something. What do they consider it? Yeah, it's a commodity. It's like gold or silver. So if you buy gold, you hold it. Yeah. Gold goes up. You sell it. You profited. You pay taxes on that profit. But but now I think the the big banks like Chase uh, are are looking into using Bitcoin. Have you heard Have you heard about They're this? They're looking. They're looking into using blockchain technology. They okay. want to build a private ledger, which kind of defeats the purpose of right. being being observable and public, and nope. therefore, you know, uh, accountable. Right. <laughs> so yeah, they're gonna have their own public private ledger, which they already have. You know, we can't see their books, but so yeah, I mean that. But that's still good for Bitcoin and crypto space. Um, people hear about it, and then, well, hopefully, this private ledger won't be as popular as a public ledger where everyone can see transactions and we can audit it and yeah. look for shenanigans. Exactly. Yeah, it's the whole idea of being open source, right, where everybody mm -hmm. can see what's going on. Um, so, yeah, so I guess uh, that after you discovered Bitcoin, like, uh, so is that where Watch My Bit started coming into that your was, mind? That was part of it, yeah, because, you know, I was so excited by it. I My first experience, at, I, I've been to Porkfest like six times, so 2011... 2010 was my first pork fest and I I well at first I went to pork fest just to go that's where I won my my pole dancing contest all right miss porky pole number one right here <laughs> it was this big gay dance party <laughs> nice. and then I thought to myself what can I do for agora fest for uh, for agora alley you know and sell something so I I make smoothies so I brought two smoothie machines and I made smoothies and that first time I did it we did a lot of smoothies for uh, silver. That was the big alternative currency. Well, the next year, I ran into these three guys I'd never met before, Roger Ver, Charlie Shrem, and uh, Eric Voorhees. And they said, and I had heard of Bitcoin, I had already bought my first Bitcoin, and they said, would you take Bitcoin in your smoothie stand? I said, absolutely. So they set me up with my first phone wallet. And these guys are famous Bitcoiners, if you know Roger Ver, Charlie Shrem, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric Voorhees. Um, so they're the guys who walked me through it, and then my first customer was Mark Edge. So they walked Mark Edge down there, and they, we both had phones, and we're both going, what do you do? And, well, you do that. Okay, got it. You show them. Okay, got it. Mm, yeah, boom. There you go. I sold, I think, 15 smoothies for Bitcoin, including three Casatius coins, which are the physical Bitcoins, Okay. which are worth a lot more than regular Bitcoin now. Hmm. Uh, they're kind of a, oh, what's the word, souvenir sort of a thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so... That's and then my then um, and I went to the very first Bitcoin conference in 2013 and racking my brain, what can I do in this space? What can I do in this space? Well, I had been a video videographer for years. I shot wedding video back in California. I started doing corporate video. I did sporting event video, and I realized. So one thing I did after I got back from the uh, the first the first Bitcoin convention out in San Jose, I was trying to rack my brain. What can I do? in this space and I had been a videographer I shot wedding videos and did corporate videos and then sporting event videos mixed martial arts I, I here in Minneapolis and then so I thought ah, I'll combine these things together some way and so kind of a funny story I go to my friend who is a computer programmer I said Oliver you gotta make me a prototype of a website that I can put a video up scan QR code Bitcoin sent video starts and he says, I think I can do it. I can't do it for free. I work full time. Understand? So I, we agreed on a payment plan to pay him three installments. So he does the first portion of it, and I give him the money. He goes back 
does the second portion, it's looking really good, and I give him the money, and he gives it back. And he goes, I don't want the money, I want to be CTO of this company. <laughs> so Oliver is now our CTO, he lives out in, uh, in Arizona. Yeah. He's the guy who does all the coding in the background um, of our site, wow. and that was really cool. And then I hook up with my old friend Mark Hilgenberg, who uh, I met back in the libertarian days of California, who is an idealist also, whose brother works for Disney. So we have a nice Disney uh, Hollywood connection there. Um, hmm. And uh, he's our CFO. He's a financial planner, has been for years, and uh, handles our, our books and stuff. So that's how Watch My Bit was born. And hmm. uh, we, we came out in a couple iterations, and you could say a beta, and then we did a sort of a soft launch. And uh, we're about to re- do our front page yet again. I don't know if it's a good time I could share those the pages. You know, should we check that out now? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do it now. It's fine. All right. So let's just. Uh, I'm going to bring up our existing page here, and I will share my screen. We get one shot at this. Let's let's make sure this works. Let me know when you're seeing my screen. Good. All right. So here is our front page. Up there is our explainer video, and then here is. As it is now, our featured video row, and down below that is our new videos. Um, and you'll see people we know, like Dana Martin, Peaceful oh, Parent. I see, my, oh, I see mine there. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Anarchism. Look at that guy. 30 cents for a nice long hour interview. That's great. You know? <laughs> and where does that money go, by the way, Danilo? Oh, it goes to help me to uh, do more of that, <laughs> what I love to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So watch it. Watch his stuff on here. Here's uh, here's Adam Kokesh from Anarch from Anarcho Poco. But not just that. We have full length feature films like this one on Falling for 99 cents. This is a full length feature indie film. Hmm. Here's John Bush's Sovereign Living, episode two. Mm. And then here is um, our probably our big win, which is. Uh, scribes, which really does star Danny Trejo, you know, Danny uh -huh. Trejo hmm. is, and Jane Lynch is in here too. Nice. You get a free preview. You can pay altcoins with Shifty, so all you Dash people can are included too. Mm. And Bob and Rob, these are the guys who are um, Bob Hilgenberg is Mark's brother. Um, mm. So, but this is, and then you know, if we take a sneak peek back into what the artist sees where you can upload your own videos. Now, I'm signed in as College Days. Um, and if you guys watch the beginning of the video that Danilo did, you'll see our explainer video. Look at the splits here. Here's one, two, th here's nine different Bitcoin addresses with easy to remember aliases, you know, drums, bass, singer, keyboard, you know, studio, cause, Sean's outpost. How tough is that? So these Bitcoin addresses can be assigned to the videos, or you can split with them. So here is back scene here of a split called Tempted One, and here's the percentages. 10% goes to the keyboard player, 15 to the singer. Bass players only get 3%. I'm sorry, they're bass players. Okay, I'm making jokes. 2% for the drum. Um, and then the studio here gets 50% because we owe them money. And then you can change the split once we pay the studio back, for example. Now, here's a, the same split without the studio. And then we've reallocated money to the people in the band. So that's the behind-the-scenes look. That's not going to change. Well, what will change from our um, front page here, we're changing it to a much more brighter look. Here is... By the way, I'm breaking this live on Danilo's show here. His podcast is the first to see our new look. Wow. You like that? Look at white. that. White. Beautiful. Exactly. It's more, uh, and white is a better color psychologically. Hmm. Uh, these are just placeholders. We don't, of course, have any bad lip reading stuff here. But our <laughs> featured row now has a big and then four small ones. And those will be rotating through. Ah. We actually have a how to use our stuff, and this will all be different when you see it live, this will, and then as you scroll over, you'll get information on buying Bitcoin for your first time. And then we have all of our social media feeds down here. We'll have our very own um, uh, podcast, uh, how-to videos of our site and everything. So that's pretty exciting. And then what a lot of people have been asking for, when you click on a video, here's what you will see now. The different redesigned paywall. Hmm. 
you still will get the preview. If you can see me clicking on this, mm -hmm. you can still pay with altcoins, and this will have the Shifty logo on it. But now you can share with friends. When you click on that, this is what people have been begging for, embed mm. code. Mm. Now you can embed your, your Watch My Bit video with the paywall in your own website. So no one has to leave your website, but you still get the advantage of the Bitcoin paywall. Nice. Wow. Right. Uh, and then we have a, a real nice, fun uh, rating system here. <laughs> smiley, not, you know, frowny, <laughs> smiley, and middle. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> right. Uh, on our search, we people have been asking for this, too. I'll go back to our main page here. Here's the categories now. Now we have genres, comedy, music, movies, gaming, educational. We'll probably put indie films or sketches, uh, stand-up, you know, that kind of stuff under genres. <laughs> You can divide it up into prices. I only want to see videos that are 9 to 20 cents, for example, or mm. up to 20 cents, up to 50 cents. And then here is, we'll have something else, trending, sponsored, only videos that have previews, because we have allowed free previews mm. on our site, 30 seconds. And then it, subscriptions, too. And you can subscribe to your favorite uh, shows. You know, here, here would be all your subscriptions, for example. And when a new video comes out, you'll be alerted, just like on YouTube. And you can watch these for up to 24 hours. And know that the money goes to the artist, you know, almost all of it, which is much different than uh, YouTube. And really, you know, and then here's, uh, and so here's what our search results would look like, you know, when you come back with your searches here. Mm -hmm. like. So nice, it's a big change nice. yeah. from the dark look. Definitely. <laughs> Dark to look. <laughs> a light look. Right. <laughs> a lot easier on the eyes, right? Right, I think it is, right. I, I remember there was one uh, request I had of you, uh, which was the, um, you know, having the ability to go onto the desktop and choose a thumbnail for your videos. Remember, right, right, yep. And that's still going to be a limited a little bit. Um, so right now, here's, I'll show you a thumb, thumbnail chooser. If I go to a video here and then pick one of my old college days, click edit. And then here's my thumbnail preview. I only have the option of three yeah. thumbnails, right? Right, right, right. Right, and that we can work on this in the future. This is what we pull from our, you know, um, our CDN, our content delivery network. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our preview section here. You can drag the um, the handles around and choose different sections to preview, and then click save and. That's saved. Is that is, is that now? Because I, I try to do that, but the, the, the handles are always together. It can never separate them. Well, the longer your content, this is only a four minute oh, clip. Oh, right. That's right. Maybe there's that. Okay. So, because it's, right. but yeah, so a movie would be really tough to, to see, and you right. see it, it looks like this. You yeah. Can exactly. Stretch them open. Exactly. Yeah. You, you probably see this and it drags together, right? Right, 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 right. Okay. Makes right. sense. Right. All right. So it works then. I should use that. <laughs> right. Yeah, because then people get to see. Your free stuff. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited. So when does that come out? The new look. We are hoping to see this come out in the next two weeks. Trademark. Uh, no, we've got we've got the next iteration is finished now, and we are going to have uh, our Slack channel. If you go to Watch My Bit Slack channel, you can help us and give us feedback, and you can test out the new video, the new platform, and let us know what you think and help us find some bugs if there are any. So we're hoping to have that up in about two weeks or so. So by the time this video is live, Danilo, it should be up and running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right, awesome. Well, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And um, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about that coming out because uh, yeah, I, I upload all my stuff to watch my bit. And uh, we appreciate you know, I'm very, that. very happy to share my content there, you know, support anybody who, um, you know, supports Bitcoin and of course volunteerism. <laughs> so exactly. So yeah, I'm uh, very interested to see how how it will grow, and uh, and also the fact that it's just educating people about Bitcoin, you know. Right. Uh, well, here here's a, what we like to say: if you need to teach someone about Bitcoin, our site is the greatest because it's easy. You're buying something; it's instantaneous. Because once you scan the QR code, it launches. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, our new version will be totally mobile ready. Ah, right. In fact, you'll just be able to tap the QR code on your phone and it'll say which wallet do you want to use and then you can pay for it right there. Wow. Yep. <laughs> it, it, yeah, so that'll be enabled. Um, 
But think about what you can teach someone about Bitcoin just by looking at one of our videos. QR codes, scanning, smartphone wallets, watch me scan, launching, right? And then you can say now this, you know, you can see in the smartphone that I sent 11 cents to that address and there it is. And, and it really helps people wrap their heads around it. This is a great way to do it. You know, get someone their own, give them their own wallet, throw them a dollar and say, you go launch a video now. Oh, I see. And then there's a minor fee. You can explain mining that way. And, uh, so I really think just using our site will teach people about Bitcoin. In fact, that was our early strategy. We purposefully kind of haven't been to a ton of Bitcoin conferences. Um, we've been to a few and we'll go to a few more, but we really wanted to reach out to the mainstream people who haven't heard about Bitcoin. Mm. And we want them to think of Bitcoin not as this amazing worldwide currency that you can send to China for two cents and there's no government or corporations involved. Mm -hmm. We want people to think of it as a Chuck E. Cheese token, <laughs> right? A simple in-game token. People understand in-game currency. Right. It's the in-game currency we use to launch videos and pay the artists. Mm -hmm. So if, and if we can get people, you know, wrapping their head around that, like before I can, before I can go to the, the Google Play Store and buy a video, I need to sign up for their in-game token. It's called a credit card, but that's their in-game token, right? Mm -hmm. It's a pain in the ass. I got to give them all my information. I got to sign up for this thing. I need to get a credit card. I need to have a bank account, right? So our in-game token is much more universally accepted anywhere in the world. You don't need a bank account. You don't need to tell your friends or, <laughs> or tell this company your email and everything else at all. And you can just use it without even signing up for anything. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's an amazing philosophical achievement that's going to disrupt <laughs> the entire financial system. Of the <laughs> by, the way, by the way, <laughs> we get this, but don't explain that to newbies, you know? Hey, it's the in-game token. <laughs> right. And the beautiful thing that I love about Bitcoin is that, you know, people use it um, because it's convenient, it's fast, and it's efficient. And and that's the beauty of it, right? Then and and because of that, they don't have to be forced to use it. Like we're all forced to use Federal Reserve notes, right? You know, by law, like that's what legal tender means. And yeah. and so if you're forced to use something, you know, perhaps that means that it's crap because nobody would want to voluntarily use it. <laughs> right, like the public school system. <laughs> right, that <laughs> forced <laughs> funding. Everything, everything, yeah, basically, um, you know, what, what's that idea? If your ideas require force, they're worthless, right? Mm -hmm. so, so Bitcoin is a beautiful thing because people love to use it because they see how fast and efficient it is and how, like you said, it skips third parties and it's direct, you know, people to people and it's just, you know, it doesn't recognize any boundaries, any nationalities, nothing. It's just, right. <laughs> you know, it uses, it uses the lightning fast immediacy of the Internet. Right, right, and there's no, yeah, clearing houses, don't eat them, you know, government watchdogs, don't eat them. <laughs> right. I'm the watchdog, all right? <laughs> I, I uh, my... Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's, just, it's just funny, like, the, a lot of the arguments that people use against Bitcoin, um, you know, they, they don't realize how absurd they sound, you know, like, well, it can be hacked, or what happened to Mt. Gox, you see, they got hacked and all their Bitcoin were lost, you see, or, you know, Bitcoin is just used for drugs, you know, it's used for all these horrible things, and people die. And I want let's let's dispel that myth right now. Okay, this is new. <laughs> We've got new wallets that are much easier to use. You don't need to leave your money on Mount Gox. I have over a thousand dollars on this phone. Okay, if I get mugged because I just said this on the air, right? And uh, you, you take my phone, you still don't get my Bitcoin. You destroy my phone, I get my Bitcoin back when I just you know reconstitute my my wallets. Right. It's easy. It's not hard. It's not difficult. Yeah, like my nephew and niece, they're nine and ten. You know, they have Bitcoin on their phones, and I, I pay them in their little, you know, for doing chores, <laughs> oh, <really>? birthdays. <laughs> they great. love it because they can get. Oh, look, it went up a little bit. Oh, that's or, great. How come it went down, Uncle Doug? Well, because you know, then I can explain monetary systems and stuff, and they learn. And with the Airbits wallet, then they can go buy Target gift cards and buy their, you know, Lego sets. <laughs> that's so cool. Actually, that's a great idea. I could do that with my kids, too. That's a great yeah. idea. I did not think about that at all. Let me get my lights on. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's great for kids and teaching that kind of stuff and learning. And, you know, how old are your kids? Uh, six and four. Six-year-olds. So 
if they, you know, here's one thing you can do. If he doesn't have his own smartphone yet, do you use AirBits or what kind of wallet yeah, do you use? Yeah, AirBits. Yeah. So make a sub wallet, uh, put his name on it and say, look what I just did. I'm going to send money. It's almost like an allowance thing. You can show him, hey, look how much you have. <laughs> there you go. And then when he gets his own, then he can just transfer it to him. Great. I uh, I think I will do that. Um, I mean, he does have his own jars with his own uh, Federal Reserve notes, and he counts them, and he's got mm-hmm. a separate jar for the 20, for the 10, for the 5, <laughs> for the 1s. Um, and also another thing that I, I like to do when he was younger was, like, when he was around 3, um, I would go to the – because that's when I was starting learning about gold and silver, so I would take him uh, – I think 2 and 3. I would take him to the gold and silver shop and buy silver with him. And so, and so he learned about that, and then so he found it fun because you know we would get it, and we would he would play with it and count it, and <laughs> yeah, we would do like right. a, you know the ding test where you f- figure out if it's a counterfeit coin by you know you know seeing the sound that it makes when you hit one coin against the other. Right. <laughs> yeah. Here, I, I, you know, this is what, what they're using in Pork Fest. These are right. sil- little silver. You yeah. know, there's a, a one gram. Right. And That's this cool. is a, a gold one. It's a little gold thread. Let's see. Wow, very nice. Cool. Right. And then, then we switch to the the dime cards. Nice. Right? Yeah. Right? Those are kind of fun. Beautiful. And then we all switch to Bitcoin. The all of pork fests. You said, you know, hey, Bitcoin is easier. You can Easy. move it. I don't have to carry cards with me. Right. <laughs> but I like these things because it's fun to show people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So so Bitcoin I mean Bitcoin is has taken over of pork fest, you're saying they they no longer use those? They because they're just clunky, right? Bad money drives out good. There is still silver. There's still gold. But last time I was there, Bitcoin was everywhere. Right. Yeah, it really caught on. And I think it, and then, you know, the network's getting better. And I wasn't there this year, but uh, I'd, I'd like to find out about it. A lot of people boycotted it this year because, you know, Mark and Ian right. weren't invited. <laughs> have you been there before? Uh, I have not. I'm pretty close to it, so I should be. I know, I know. Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty, he was there this past one. Uh, mm. He said it was great. Um, I, I would have loved to go. I, I've been to Liberty Fest in Brooklyn, mm. and I met a lot of great people there. Tom Woods, Adam Kokesh, uh, Derek yeah. Bros, Katie Chaos, a bunch of people. That yeah, What's that? Um, uh, the, the woman, the Bitcoin girl, the redhead? Bitcoin girl. What's her name? Oh, yeah. Naomi Brockwell. Right, right. Yeah. In fact, uh, I did an interview with her, and it's on Watch My Bit, and only on Watch My Bit. It is one of the most fun interviews I've ever done. Um, if you get a chance, I mean, I'll try to share again. I don't think it's going to work, but let's just try it once to cross our fingers. It never worked before. Let me know if that's coming across. No. 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 Okay. If you want to share uh, Watch My Bit, I'll show you the Bitcoin girl interview I did, it's only 16 cents and the money goes to her. Ah. Look at that. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of Naomi Brockwell and Bitcoin girl, as we said earlier, I'm sort of an amateur screenwriter. Right. And I, if you go to steam it right now and search my name, Doug Scribb, there are three short sketches. One of them is written for Naomi Brockwell. So I want her to be in my screenplay and in this other uh, short sketch. So, and she has agreed that she would be part of it if it if we we, we get it funded and it takes off. Mm. So it's somehow I wrote a romantic comedy that has Bitcoin sort of on the underlying part of it. <laughs> Don't know how romantic comedy and Bitcoin go together, but <laughs> it's not work. And you know, if you're interested in reading it, I'd, I'll send you the full script. Okay. Yeah. I so, mean. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely include that in the in the description. Uh, that that video for people if they want to check yeah. that out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll send you the uh, the link. Oh wait, to wait, it wait. Here. You don't have it on. You don't have it on. Watch. Oh yeah. You have the interview on Watch My Bit. Yeah, I have an interview with uh, with Naomi Brockwell, which is one of the most fun interviews I've ever done because she's such a sparkler. You know, she's a firecracker. Yeah. She's fun, <laughs> funny and great interview. Yeah. Yeah. She the is. other fun interview I did was with that, that same thing with Stephanie Murphy from a hot tub. We were in a hot tub. I think I did see that. <laughs> right. I was wearing this one. Yeah, see the picture there in Skype? Yeah, I can't. Okay, right, oh, right, right. Right, right. Is that from that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, great. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of possibility for education, um, you know, with Bitcoin. Right. And just quickly, anybody listening to this, if you do video content, you can use my platform. Our platform. Use Watch My Bit. You can upload your own videos there. Right. Get a Bitcoin address and a wallet. 
you know, and just start uploading videos. And it depends on you to market it. We're not a marketing company. So if you have a following already and to say to your following, hey, everybody, I moved some videos to watch my bid. If you watch them there, we, I get a little more money. I can keep my lights on more. You know, part one is on YouTube for free, but part two is going to watch my bit for 30 cents or, uh, you know, early release is another one. So you could release your podcast and watch my bit for a week early, mm. try to earn some money from your fans, your super fans who, who love you, right? They'll do anything. They'll give you 30 cents to watch an episode. And then you move it to what to YouTube for free later. Yeah. It's one of the models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's great. I mean, there's a lot of different. There's a lot of possibility for this, and uh, I really see it growing, because um, I think it's, it's a great idea. You know, I think you guys are doing a great job, so I want to yeah. support you. So I'm happy to, you know, use my content there. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll be in, we'll be at Anarcho Polco again too. Uh, hopefully, we'll be helping them gamify Bitcoin down there this year. Gamify. All right, d- d- define that for me. <laughs> Gamification, the the making a game out of whatever so for all, all the people who don't have bitcoin we want them to start using it learn how easy it is so we have all these cool ideas okay like okay. like um uh anybody everybody like they'd announce watch this video and watch so they'd all get x amount of bitcoin when they arrive we just want to make sort of make that happen and we've got sponsors who will probably donate a lot of bitcoin so everyone will get three four bucks in bitcoin Hmm. Everyone will have a phone. Almost everyone does already, right? Mm-hmm. And then there'll be several games throughout the conference that they can use to get more Bitcoin. Like, uh, oh, just so many possibilities. Um, just go to this sponsor and get a little paper wallet. I mean, that's a game, but people will all of a sudden want to be earning more Bitcoin and scanning QR codes at the various sponsors' tables. That's one very simple idea. Mm-hmm. The other idea is, okay, here's the next game. There's a magic word. That magic word is only going to be found if you watch this video and watch my bit. Hmm. By the way, it's a fun video, and it's one of our sponsors. And when they say the magic word, email it into this special email address, and then the first 10 people or 10 random people will get Bitcoin sent to their wallet. But they'll get sent Bitcoin to their wallets during lunch or during one of the events, Okay, is everyone ready? And then 10 people will say, bingo, I just got five bucks. Oh, I did too. You know, and the 10 winners will be, so we we're thinking that it's going to be really fun and social. Hmm. And then they're going to use Bitcoin, We, I hope, to be used to like gain entrance to some of the events. Events that are free, and they still are free because this Bitcoin you have come across through games and giveaways. Hmm. And, right, right, right. And then that way when people leave, they'll have enough Bitcoin to watch the videos of the speakers from Anarcho Poco. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wow. That's sort of one of the concepts. And then we want to, the gamification of everything is sort of uh, kind of hip marketing these days. <laughs> wow. So you're making me feel worse for not being, for not being able to attend. <laughs> I know, I know you gotta go. <laughs> By the way, frequent flyer miles. I was shocked how few frequent flyer miles you needed to get down there. Really? Really surprised. Yeah. Yeah, my kids uh, have not been on a plane yet, so that would be a new experience. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I would uh, I would love to go meet everyone down there. It's an amazing experience being around volunteers and liberty minded people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just an amazing experience, like like in Liberty Fest, and, and also went to um, Asheville, visited the volunteers down there. The that that used to be the Blue Ridge Liberty Project, now they're the Volunteers Initiative. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just a beautiful thing to be around such people who understand these concepts and. All right, right. You know, they're like, all right, I'm past taxation of theft. All right, now what can we do to make the world a better place? <laughs> right, right. And, so much easier. And and we're already doing these things, and it's like, it's like, um, you know, the way I look at it is like, you know, the the freedom boat is on a one way, it's on a one way journey, and it's like you're either on the boat or you're not on the boat. So <laughs> there's no going back from here. It's 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 like the abolitionists. You know, they were the forward thinking people of their time. And right. everyone else was backward. And, you know, with the Internet and all that communication, open communication, it's just getting easier for us to, to get these ideas out there. We, gotta, we have to uneducate a bunch, but the education part is becoming easy and the content is there. And, you know, whatever your personality, you'll find something that fits and helps you understand things. There'll be a communicator out there who is right for you.
Yeah, yeah, and, and what's so beautiful also about Bitcoin, like you said, is that you don't have to be knowledgeable in economics and volunteerism ah. and all this stuff to to use it. No, you know? no, no. Yeah, and here's the other thing I hate: you don't <laughs> have to know the name of the protocol. You don't have to know what mining is. People say, "Well, how does Bitcoin work?" I don't get it. I go, "Well, let me ask you a question: <laughs> How does this work?" Right. Right? Exactly. What is the name of the protocol that reads the magnetic strip and then encapsulates it into some sort of a data packet and <laughs> shoots it down some specialized network line? What is that called? Oh, you don't know? Oh, or, but you don't need to know, right? Or, or how, do, how do Federal Reserve notes get made? I know. <laughs> how many people right. know that? What is, so the Federal, what is the Federal Reserve? <laughs> exactly. You just know that it works, right? So, yeah, the idea that people have to understand mining and protocols and hashing and all that, you know. Well, nah. I, I think when they're asking that, they really want to um, make sure in their own minds that it's not a scam. This might be a scam, right? This, right. Might, this might just be the next thing that some guy is trying to, you know, get one on me and you know, take my money and stuff. And so, yeah. but, you know. It's too big now. I mean, every, everyone's heard of it. Yeah, I, I know, exactly. Not, not everyone, but uh, I, I'm one of those outgoing guys who's, who asks every waitress and waiter I come by. Do you take Bitcoin? Oh, really? Do you want Bitcoin for your tip? Ah. Every single one. <laughs> Gas station attendants. And it just like, you know, I throw it out there. And <laughs> That's then great. they say, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Hey, could one more person, positive reinforcement. Cool. Yep. I recommend you do the same thing. That's, it. That's interesting. I, I haven't thought about doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I got a, I've got a coffee house where uh, five of the baristas take personal tips and can't wait for me to come in. <laughs> So, yeah. so, so what, you use your AirBits wallet to do that? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Or, or Mycelium. I set them up with an AirBits wallet, actually. They have an a, a, a iPad for their point-of-sale system. And so it's very – and the owner had been doing it for two years, and she's been interested in it. So she's really forward-thinking. She keeps all of her Bitcoin. Uh, there's a restaurant nearby where I have uh, – you know, there was three servers who I got to take Bitcoin you know, with their own wallets. And then they all heard of it. That's the other thing. They have all heard of it before. And I say, just download this wallet. Download an app. You don't download apps every day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give it three bucks on top of your regular tip. That's the first thing I do, you know. I over tip them uh, as an incentive. Nice. And then, <laughs> and then, oh, cool, you know. <laughs> wow, see that? You're a great spokesman for Bitcoin, you know. You're <laughs> I want to be, I want a new name. I want, you know, I want Bitcoin Moses. <laughs> Yeah, Leading Bitcoin, people to the promised land. Bitcoin right? Jesus was taken, right? He's I know. Bitcoin, right. <laughs> Bitcoin Moses. I like right. that. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, Doug, it's wonderful talking to you. So is there anything else you want to finish up with before we sign off? Um, you know, I think we covered just about everything there. Screenplay, history, Bitcoin, watch my bit, video. Watch my bit. Go to watchmybit.com. Jump on board. Start using the platform. Tell your friends. And, and reward what, the people are like Danilo, who's already up there. Yeah, Watch yeah. his videos there first. You'll be helping him and his family and his six-year-old. Yes, four and six-year-old. <laughs> right? And you can split with them. Hey, that now that is a marketing campaign. Hey, right. everybody, this money is going to my son's Bitcoin address. See that? My son's allowance. <laughs> exactly. Create incentives, you know, business. This is college fund. Understanding business, uh, I, you know, people. I think, I think, I think there are certain uh, parents that kind of um, shun the idea of teaching your kids about money, and you know, investing and business. But I don't, I don't understand that because I think, I think as human beings, you know, we all respond to incentives. And right. when you, when you say, you know, um, I'll let you eat this sweet thing if you clean your room, that's an incentive equally as if. It's, you were to say, if you do this for me, I'll give you, you know, this much Bitcoin or I'll give you five dollars. Right. Know? Well, here, here's an idea. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. And I believe you if you're doing it that way, then that's fantastic because it teaches them responsibility and money, accountability. Right. Uh, savings, loss, you know, right. spending, yeah. uh, saving for a rainy day. Uh, a friend of mine uh, who, you know, a libertarian too, back from when I was in Orange County, she said, here's what I did with my kids. We had chores. I made them I made them compete against each other. So she would say, "How much do you want for the dishes?" And her daughter would say, "Five bucks." And her son, "I'll do it for three. Okay, I'll do it for two. Okay, I'll, I'll do it." And then pretty soon they came to whatever the market was, and they got some 
equilibrium. Right. Right. Uh, it's not worth it. You can do it for 50 cents. <laughs> Boom. She got the 50 cents. The kid didn't need it. Whatever. Right. Right. Maybe he wanted to mow the lawn more. Maybe. But I thought that was really kind of a cool parenting that idea. Interesting. Yep. The market is open. The market is open. Here are the, here are the chores. Who will do this for one dollar? You know. Right. That's a great. That's a great lesson in uh, in how pricing works and the price mechanism. You know, where do prices come from? They don't just come right. down from the sky. You know, they, they they come from you know basically opportunity costs and what people are willing to pay for a particular item. Uh, versus not getting the item, you know, and and what is your time worth and the alternatives, you know, for right. spending on that item. So that's a great that's a great teaching tool. I will. Right. Uh, and what is dad willing to pay? You know, if the kid says ten bucks, nope, I'll do it myself. You know, then boom, <laughs> yeah. you've got you know, price yourself out of the labor market. <laughs> right, right, well, right. That, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yourself. I like that. Yep. Oh man, <clears throat> so it's like the, it's like the reverse minimum wage, right? Yeah, exactly. you, priced, you priced yourself. <laughs> right. I want no less than three dollars for this. Your brother's gonna do it for two. That's not fair. <laughs> well, that's that's what he wants to do it for. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. Awesome. Um. So. So Doug, yeah, please. Um. You know, let let everyone know uh, where they can find you if they want to contact you. What's the, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, best ways to go to watchmybit.com, and we have a contact section there. But, you know, hey, Doug at Watch My Bit will get me an email. Love to hear from you guys. Let me get, know your opinions and let me know um, if you'd like to see any particular features. Let me know if you need help. I will help you if you're new to Bitcoin, if you're new to uploading videos to Watch My Bit. I will help you with all of that stuff. Awesome, awesome. And uh, and one more thing I'd like to ask my guests is, uh, what is your favorite quote of all time? It was an Ayn Rand quote of some kind that I really liked. One of them, I paraphrasing here, is, the smallest minority on the face of the earth is the individual. So without individual rights, there are no minority rights. Yep. So that was interesting. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, and and I was just um, I was I was talking on a, on a Facebook uh, post, one of my posts, uh, and somebody mentioned the greater good, but not in the sense of like like authoritarian collectivism, greater good. I think they were meaning like like if if uh, individual rights were protected um, and were the first to be uh, you know in mind, then that is great. That is good. That is the for the greater good. And yeah. so in that, in that sense, you know, if, if it is harmful for the individual, by definition, it cannot be for the greater good, right? Good so, point. So, so th because we all have it in mind, when we mention this f phrase, the greater good, we always think about authoritarian collectivism and tyranny and Hitler and all that. But, yeah. but really, um, if it is good for the individual, it is for the greater good. So I thought that was yeah. an interesting point to, to, to yeah. bring up as well. But, uh, but thanks for the conversation, uh, Doug. It's really fascinating learning about this stuff. I'm really happy to see that it's growing and you're improving it. Um, and I hope that will continue. So, um, thanks I for having me. Really appreciate you being on our channel and having your own Watch My Bit channel and what you're doing here. This is uh, you know, getting, the, getting the word out about so many important issues. Yeah, thanks a lot. I um, I really try. And um, so if you want to help me out and um, help me interview fascinating people like Doug here, please uh, donate. You can donate Bitcoin or PayPal or Patreon. My uh, I, my link is uh, patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. Um, dollars. Or just watch the videos and watch my bit and pay him. Or you can watch the videos and watch no my bit. For, for tips, just pay. Watch my video for 30 cents. It comes to me. Yep, you can do that. So, I mean, I give my I give my uh, my viewers um, options, right? But uh, but definitely watch my bit is one avenue. Uh, or you can also actually go onto my Facebook, uh, my website po post, and I have Amazon affiliate links, and you can do your shopping through those, and I get a little uh, percentage kickback from that uh, at no extra cost to you. So that's another method. So um, awesome conversation, Doug. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. So this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and theseofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.
Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.